Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, enough is enough, says PM. Arnold Schwarzenegger commends PM's efforts. And Sudelpa leader seeks Queen's counsel. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Political leaders attacking those of different ethnicity and those of different religion on social media is completely unacceptable. Prime Minister Borenge Mbani Marama made this statement while speaking at the University of the South Pacific Open Day earlier today. Ali Kimbia with the story. With people attacking those of speaking against the old forces of division, Prime Minister Borenge Mbani Marama has urged students and all young Fijians to work together and shut the door for any attempts to divide Fiji. We only beat back those old forces when the vast majority of Fijians came together and finally said, enough is enough. It was only through the will of the Fijian people, the will of your parents, your grandparents, and even your great-grandparents, that we emerged as a United Nation. Baini Marama says there are people who will always take things along racial lines. But make no mistake. The voices of hatred and division that once did such untold damage to our nation are not gone. Baini Murama says they will continue their mandate to unite Fiji and bring sound management to the economy. It's clear that a united Fiji and a stable Fiji is a strong Fiji. We finally have a clear national direction that is delivering real improvements in the lives of our people the Prime Minister has also urged students to make good use of the educational opportunities provided by government. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. During the Climate Action Pacific Partnership Conference in Suva, actor and former Governor of California Arnold Schwarzenegger used a video address to applaud Fiji's work in the climate change fight. In his video, Schwarzenegger apologized for not being in Fiji as he's currently shooting Terminator 6. The former Governor praised the efforts of COP23 President and Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama on his climate leadership. The CAP conference saw the launch of the Pacific Talanoa Dialogue, the first such meeting taking place as part of a global series of dialogues directed to raise ambition in implementing the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. And you have shown terrific leadership, unbelievable. I mean, you're really kicking some serious butt, so we are very, very proud of you. So thank you very much for everything that you do, and you're a great leader in an environmental movement. The two-day Climate Action Pacific Partnership Conference in Suva has been labelled a successful one that's contributed to the preparation of COP24 later this year. Fiji's climate champion Inia Seruratu says the event provided a platform for all various stakeholders to identify our responsibilities, challenges and approaches needed in addressing the impacts of climate change. Kelly Vavala reports. It's been a fruitful discussion for these delegates as they exchanged ideas, innovations and experiences on climate action, particularly in areas of adaptation, mitigation and finance. Corp President, uh, we are all in the same canoe and we all have to take responsibility. And the CAP event is such a wonderful uh, uh, opportunity for all uh, the stakeholders, particularly uh, in the region. It's not only the political leadership, but all the main actors as well coming together so that we can identify our responsibilities, look at the opportunities, the challenges as well, and how are we going to address all these issues. Climate change chief negotiator Lukin Downivalu says the CAP conference is an important part of the ongoing work carried out by the COP23 presidency. An important stop is the session that will be convened in Bangkok uh, at the beginning of September. Uh, and that session will essentially look to finalizing the draft negotiating text that will form the Paris Agreement work program. 
Danny Balu adds that Fiji's fight against climate change will not end this year as advocacy and awareness on this global issue will continue and the call on urgent action is still vital as generations to come depend on it. Kelly Vatala, FBC News. Sudalpa leader Sitiveni Romboka, who is facing charges for providing false declaration of assets, income and liabilities to the supervisor of elections, will be engaging a Queen's counsel for his case. Romboka is currently facing two charges brought forward by FICAC. Pranita Prakash reports. The defence lawyer informed the Suva magistrate that they will be engaging an overseas counsel for the next court date and sought a 14-day adjournment to carry out necessary paperwork. They also questioned the formulation of the first charge whereby three particular transactions were put into one charge when each would have different justifications. FICAC responded that this was to avoid duplicity and if defense thinks that it would interfere with the process of a fair trial, prosecution would consider separate charges. Rambuka was charged by FICAC under Section 24 of the Political Parties Registration Conduct Funding and Disclosures Act of 2013. It's alleged last year he provided false declaration of assets and liabilities to the supervisor of elections by failing to provide information pertaining to a tax liability with the Fiji Revenue and Customs Services which amounted to over $316,000. He is also alleged to have failed to declare investment and interest income from Ragwan Construction Limited in the amount of $200,000 and $16,000 respectively, and also a liability in the amount of $120,000. In the second charge, he is charged with one count of breach of bail. The matter has been adjourned to 13th August. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Still to come, Navy appoints 19-year-old as commander of the day. And Sheba Smith wins tickets to Celine Dion's concert. Stay with us. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagrong and Bula Fib, Nabondo and a Ser. Oya was it says, Lambasa, and the Teletan of Rong and Bula Fem, Nabondo and Ser. We have a Tumeli, a Kuana Town of Hingatoka, Teletakina of Rong and Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Ser. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakan and Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Ser. Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Ser. More than 400 Navy officers and sailors celebrated Navy Day in Suva to recognize the efforts and hard work of the personnel. And as a yearly tradition, the Navy appoints its youngest officer to be Commander of the Day. Akusita Thale reports that for the first time ever, a young woman became this year's commander. Calling the shots for the day, 19-year-old Serema Naingobu from Kandavu was the Commander-in-Chief giving orders to her seniors. It was an emotional day for the youngest officer in the Fiji Navy as she never dreamt she would be commander just for a day at the start of her career. It is uh, so overwhel overwhelming um, seeing this uh, senior saluting to me. Uh, I didn't dream of it. So um, it's a great experience for me to experience as a commander of the day. The new recruit and youngest of six siblings says she never planned to be a Navy personnel as she wanted to be a lawyer growing up, but her path changed course. Meanwhile, Chief Guest Justice Anthony Gates commended the hard work carried out by the Navy patrolling our waters and called for a strengthened teamwork. The public will expect every man or woman to report for duty in a fit state to carry out that duty. That means when on leave, and returning to your ship, you must ensure you have not been drinking alcohol or Yangona beforehand so as to impair your alertness and concentration when on duty. The Navy is responsible for maritime needs in border control, such as watching over our exclusive economic zone and organizing task and rescue missions. Akusit Tali, FBC News. 64.6% .6 of the victims of rape and sexual offences this year are children. And this should be a concern to all Fijians, especially parents and guardians. While closing the Early Childhood Education Week long celebration today, Minister for Women Marisani Buniwanga said people can't afford to sweep these incidences under the carpet. Savarathambo reports. 
Parents and teachers of Gospel Primary School were today reminded of their responsibility to our young ones. We need to be more vigilant in the way that we monitor the activities and whereabouts of our children. We need to be wary of the people we entrust our children with. When Wanga revealed that most cases of rape and sexual offenses against children, perpetrators are related to the child, with 34 of them being children themselves. Kindergarten students today shared various messages and talk about what they have learned during the ECE week. And we also learned condom numbers one, two, three, four. My topic today is about the drug. A drug is a substance that can harm your body. I love to read and, and do my homework. Quality early childhood care and education, everyone's responsibility, is the theme for this ECE week. The theme banks on partnerships between the educational institution, parents, teachers, religious community leaders, political leaders, government and other stakeholders who have impact on the lives of these young children. New Zealand was at the forefront and helped Fiji in the ad adaption of Koroni via joint work in agriculture to develop and outline new strategies for adaption and mitigation within the agricultural sector. Minister responsible for climate change, Aya Said Kayum, says New Zealand also partnered with Fiji for the launch of the local communities and indigenous people platform. Said Kayum says it is really refreshing to people in the Pacific to have a larger economy on the fringes of the Pacific Island that has taken up the initiative. Which is intended to give a greater voice to indigenous peoples and local communities in the climate negotiations and allow them to share their traditional knowledge and best practices on reducing emissions, adapting to climate change and building resilience. Sheba Smith today won two concert tickets, two return airfares and more than $1,000 spending money to attend Celine Dion's concert in New Zealand. Smith, who lives in Nandi, says she will take her friend to the live concert and mentions that this is a dream come true for her. The concert will be held on the 11th of next month at the Spark Arena in Auckland. Sheba won the trip to the concert on Gold FM in conjunction with airline partner Fiji Airways. Uh, I haven't. Actually, honestly, I haven't dreamt of going. Um, I think it's a lifetime, and this should be taken all the way down to my graveyard. In sports later with Jamie, Dean's under-18 champions, RKS, ready to face Nasinu Secondary School in the quarterfinal, but up next is Rachel with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening, and coming up after the break. BSP launches mobile banking app. And in growing Fiji, NFA plans to have barracks for Salva Salva Station. Stay with us. Dola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osori. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coro Coro, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote, I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altrigai, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In business tonight, the two-day Latoka Market Business Fair has been hailed a success. The Market Business Fair was organized to bring together financial, agricultural and social service providers with vendors and farmers who usually don't have time to visit their individual offices. Philippe Anacaso has more. Market vendors in Lotoka have commended the services been brought to their doorstep during the past two days by the UNDP. Before we have to leave our stall behind and we have to run to the bank or even for LSCI or BSP Life for Insua. We have to go and spend half an hour in the, with them. But now I am so grateful that uh, the UNDP has provided such uh, things like this. Market vendors, especially rural producers and part-time market vendors, need more support to access such financial services. What is happening here today it is really very, very important because we want our vendors to be upskilled. About 200 market vendors and farmers made use of these services. We don't have time to go to these uh, various companies around uh, their show today, 
So they are here with us. We just leave a stall for a few minutes and we come and uh, sit and have a session and ask them questions that are unanswered. The market fair and other training activities with the vendors were conducted by the UNDP in partnership with the local governments and other relevant stakeholders. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. BSP customers will be able to pay their bills, top up their mobile phones and carry out other ne necessary services by using the bank's newly launched mobile banking app. Country manager Kevin McCarthy says they have invested $5.5 million on the app. He says payments for major service providers like Energy Fiji, Water Authority of Fiji and Telecom can also be made through the app. The app allows customers to make recurring payment schedules, view account details, make transfers between their own accounts and make payments to other BSB accounts or external bank accounts. With our new internet banking, BSP Online Plus, um, it has all those functionalities of the app, but also allows you to make foreign exchange payments, which is, uh, which is a, a, a brand new online feature we'll be able to provide. You can also personalise your account. So if you have an account for a specific purpose, you can per personalise that. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the financial market. The US dollar was back on strong footing after the European Central Bank left their monetary policy unchanged. Their interest rates are set to remain at their present levels at least through the summer of 2019. At the same time, Trump's deal with the EU has given the U.S. the upper hand. From the data release, the dollar was unfazed by the disappointments in durable goods orders that rose by only 1% in June. Their jobless claims also rose to 217,000 with 215,000 expected. However, the much-awaited event for the U.S. this week is yet to come. Their second quarter GDP and their core personal consumption expenditure figures come out tomorrow. Meanwhile, it was a quiet day for our Aussie and Kiwi counterparts. And that's all for this week. Finaka. Thanks, Sean. Taking a look at today's currency exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar. Our dollar was on the rise against our major trading partners, Australia and New Zealand, and also showed gains against the euro and the Japanese yen, but slipped against the Chinese yuan and the US dollar. As for the commodities market, the price of oil was fairly stable at $69 per barrel. Gold dropped over $10 to close at $1,222 an ounce, and silver closed down at $1,537. And in Green Fiji tonight, the National Fire Authority plans to construct barracks for their offices at the Sava Sava station. The chief executive says this will help their officers who travel long distance to get to work. And if officers face many challenges, however, constructing the barracks should ease things a bit. Uh, the piece of land uh, itself is quite uh, quite big to accommodate that, so those are some of the future plans that we have for the barracks. And that's a wrap from the business desk for this week. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, excitement builds for second Fair Brother Challenge. And Nandi hopeful of a BOG final spot. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Min. I'm Sodi Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Babu Singh Line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Kritika from Jax Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor believes Naita Siri will throw everything they have into its HFC Bank Fair Brother Challenge against Namusi tomorrow. Following their semi-final loss to Nandrunga in the Skipper Cup earlier this month, where the Highlanders were thumped 52-19, O'Connor says they'll be reeling from the loss. However, they have put in a lot of work to get another shot at the next major trophy. After they lost to the semi-final, uh, all their focus has been on the preparation for Fair Brother. 
And uh, Namosi, like I said, defending champion. We'll not want to give the, the trophy away easily. Eh? A mammoth task awaits Ratu Kandavulebu School in tomorrow's Powerade Super Deans quarterfinals at ANZ Stadium in Suva. With the bar set very high after last year's clean sweep of all grades, the question now is, can they do it again? John Tambori with this report. It hasn't been an easy task to make it to the Dean's quarterfinals and defend their Super Dean's title. We have noticed that um, uh, the target now is to, to beat RTS in, in any grade. You have noticed that um, after the Eastern Zone, uh, two of our teams uh, scraped through to get uh, number two and number three spot. The champions are not taking any of the opponents lightly in tomorrow's quarterfinals. Uh, we do not underestimate Nasir because uh, Nasir are qualified to for the quarterfinals and we are looking forward for a good game. It has been a big year for Ratu Kandavulebu School winning the Coke Games, the International Senex Cup in Japan and the Fiji Secondary School's Under-19 Rugby League title. All the teams are calling out on their supporters to come out in masses for the Battle of the Dean's title at the ENZ Stadium in Suba tomorrow. John Tabore, FBC Sports. The Hurricanes have named an unchanged 23 from their win over the Chiefs last weekend for their Super Rugby semi-final against the Crusaders, with the exception of Adi Savia, who's been named on the bench. With history from both camps against the Hurricanes, the coaching team is giving Savia every chance to overcome the high ankle sprain he sustained with the All Blacks in last month's series against France to boost their chances in Christchurch. The Meanwhile, the Crusaders completed their last training run before tomorrow's sudden death semi-final against the Hurricanes in Christchurch. The 90 football side hopes to continue with its winning run against Mba when they meet in the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants semi-final at Churchill Park tomorrow. The Jet Setters have beaten the men in black twice this season in the Premier League and hope they can do it again this weekend when it matters the most. Russell Prasad reports. Despite losing its final group match against Suva last weekend, the Nandi football side has been one of the form teams in the BOG and will not take Ba lightly in the semi-final. You know, playing Ba in the semi-final is a big ax. You know, they, in the tournament they're different to the league. Uh, they play the league. Everybody's prepared. They've been in camp for like three weeks now. They should be a great side. You, if people watch the BOG, they should see Ba. They were fiery in all their games. Nandi's deadly striking pair, Rusiate Materenga and Napoleon Ingase Vakatini, are expected to lead the pack. Uh, they are they're all 100%. And uh, come game day on Saturday, we should be a good team. The Green Machine hopes to make a repeat of their previous matches. This, this season, we have been very strong against Ba. So we are very confident that we're going to go out with full force and try to beat Ba again. The odds are stuck against them as it's been 22 years since Nandi last won a BOG title and has never lifted the trophy at Chechel Park in Lautoka since the tournament's inception in 1978. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Lambasa football team hopes to end its 24-year drought of the Battle of the Giants trophy this weekend. The first hurdle before achieving that dream though will be to beat Suva in the semi-final tomorrow. Elna Turangaviu reports. Placed with new and young players, the Lambasa soccer team has fresh hopes of a top finish at the 2018 Battle of the Giants tournament this weekend. We're looking to make a change uh, this year for the coming semi final on uh, Saturday. We, the boys are ready. The absence of four key players to injuries and double yellow cards has mounted pressure on coach Anand Sami to prepare the team well. This is the only first time I'm like in this tournament in the same final the preparation has not been done the way it should be according to me as a coach and i'm just keeping my fingers across suva will not be an easy team to beat and the lambasa soccer side knows that to keep the dream alive they have to come out victors in the match tomorrow afternoon we know this will be a tough game because suva is a very good team and i respect the team so see if my players from the bench can be more effective so that I'm trying to work on that. Lambasa plays Suva at 2 p.m. tomorrow at Churchill Park in Lautoka. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC Sports. Bold Fiji is expecting a competitive weekend in this year's Banana Cup tournament at the Suva Bowling Club starting tomorrow. The two-day event will showcase national reps and former winners. Stella Taoi has more. 
28 teams will be participating in this year's Banana Cup tournament, thus tough competition is expected. We definitely will find a new champion because the defending champions will not be defending the titles, uh, mainly because one of the players is uh, away overseas and the other one is uh, partnering with a new player. But um, having said that, we will have some uh, former champions and, and strong combinations uh, from the West and in Suva. Bowlers are ready for showdown and will be out to prove themselves in the two-day event. All trying to you know, show their skills and uh, prove the worth in the pitch team, if there's a team that's uh, going to be coming up. So this weekend's uh, competition will be a very stiff uh, competition. The competition begins at 9 a.m. tomorrow and the finals will be held on Sunday. Stella Taoi, FBC Sports. That's it from Sports Tonight. Catch Angie later on with weather. And if you're the type of person that is tired of keeping up with the latest smartphone hardware capabilities, Project Ara might be for you. That's in new media right after the break. Radio Fiji One, non domo eviti. In tonight's new media, we take a look at Project Ara. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello to you and to the weekend. Fiji enjoyed a wonderful sunny day. Considering it's Friday, I bet it was a bonus to the weekend mood. While the day bit is sunny and warm, expect the nights to be cold. Taking a look in the west for today, what can beat the sunshine on this side? Definitely a day for swimming. Eastwards from Pak to Suva, a clear one as well. A few light showers can be expected later tonight. And up north, the day was just perfect for beach soccer or volleyball. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 12.34 a.m. with low tide at 6.43 a.m. Sunrise at 6.35. For tomorrow, such exciting news, more sunshine coming our way. So yes, your barbecues won't be interrupted. Tomorrow's temps, Nandi will be the warmest at 29 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, light showers can be expected. Apart from that, all sunny and good. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, who is your pick for the Super Rugby semi-final this weekend? I'm supporting Kursidis. I choose uh, Wartas because they are the best. Kursidis is my team. Recapping the main stories for tonight, enough is enough, says PM. Arnold Schwarzenegger commends PM's efforts and Sadopa leader seeks Queen's Council. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we're asking, were you happy with the Fiji Sevens team's performance at the Rugby World Cup? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day sent in by GK, an absolutely gorgeous pic showcasing the beauty of Sabu Sabu's marine life. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us by our Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. And the team and I have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. My name is Nan, I'm from Friendly North, Mashur hai, waise Radio Fiji 2 bhi sabi jagah mashur hai. Radio Fiji 2 desh ki dharkan. Seema Nakasi se, mai Radio Fiji 2 pasand karti hu sunne ke liye. Radio Fiji 2 desh ki dharkan. Mai hu Uncle King Singh Atoka Town ke taxi driver, deshe rugby fame se, waise Radio Fiji 2 fame se. Radio Fiji 2 desh ki dharkan.